As we have been discussing about different type of biosensors, we discussed about SPR and now we are discussing about BLI or bilayer interferometry. In the last lecture, you got a glimpse of how BLI can be used to perform the kinetic analysis of protein-protein interaction. Today we will be focusing on another application of biosensor that is biomolecular concentration analysis. The task of measuring the concentration of a specific protein in a complex solution is not simple. Therefore, a reliable analysis method for the same is desired which enables the estimation of biomolecule concentration in the complex sample matrix. In this concentration assay, different concentration of the analytes are injected and the response from these different concentrations is plotted against the concentration of each sample. From this, a calibration curve is calculated which is then used to determine the concentration of the same biomolecule in the sample matrix. Today we will be studying the concentration analysis of a protein apolipoprotein E by plotting the standard curve through biolayer interferometry based experiment. Let us welcome Mr. Sushil Vaidya for today's lecture and demonstration session. Good morning one and all, myself Sushilendra Vaidya from Paul Corporation. I am going to give a demonstration on how this BLI technology we can use in the quantitation. Now I am going to demonstrate the, the experiment here is like that quantitation of the apolipoprotein using a antibody against the apolipoprotein. The biotinylated antibody I am going to use immobilization of the antibody onto a streptiodine sensor. This is the streptiodine sensor I am using for the immobilization step. So here in this experiment we are using a streptiodine sensor. The streptiodine sensor has to be hydrate prior for the immobilizations. Now I am going to do this hydration of the streptiodine sensors. What I am doing is I am adding the 1x PBS into the 96 cell plate. 200 microliter of the 1x PBS. So, I am going to do it. Now, what I am doing is next step I am taking the biosensors, which is the streptiodine sensors. These are the sensors, looks like this. I am going to put onto the sensor tray. This, this is the sensor holder tray. I am putting this sensors like this. Now, this sensor tray I am keeping for the hydration for the 10 minutes. So, this is I am going to keep like this. So now I will set aside this sensors for the 10 minutes. Now I am going to demonstrate you that how we are going to immobilize the apolipoprotein, anti-apolipoprotein onto the streptiodine sensor. I am taking a 200 microliter of the 1x PBS buffer. This is prepared. I am going to add 200 microliter each to a well, 96 well. Putting the this is the biotinylated anti apolipoprotein. So now I am going to add 200 microliter of each biotinylated anti apolipoprotein to a 96 cell plate. Now this now the sensors are hydrated. I am going to place in the instrument the sensor holder. I am placing here like this it should be firmly fixed in the groove and now i am going to put the the sample plate which contains the biotinylated antibody i am going to place like this in the sample tray this is we call it as this this particular part we call it as a sample compartment this part we call it as a sensor compartment now i am going to click on to the data acquisition mode 
So when you click on the data acquisition, the instrument. Now you can see this how the the movement of the the optical head it consists of the spectrophotometer itself is initializing in the instrument. In the monitor during the initialization, we can observe this initialization status. Once it comes the signal as a ready, then we can use for the immobilization step. So now you can able to see here the instrument status. It is ready. When you click on the experimental wizard setup, you can see that there is a new quantitation experiment as well as the kinetics experiment. Here I am doing the immobilization step. So that's why I am choosing the basic kinetics with the experiment. I am choosing this blank experiment. Then I will say this go. Now you can see there is a page. In this page, it is it's on your left hand side. It's showing that 96 well played. What things you had put it in the 96 well played? Here I had put in the in the A1 and the B1. Here I have put a buffer that we call it as a buffer. Right click it and say it as a buffer. It's indicated by a B. Then we had to select these two. Now we had to mention this step as a load. Load is nothing but the immobilization of the biotin-related antibody against the apolipoprotein that we had placed in the second A2 and the B2. So we have to mention here in the sample ID just it is a buffer. Okay, then right copy. Now it is biotin-related apo and mention biotinylated apo and I can copy it and paste it here. In the next step in the assay definition we have to mention what is the steps the instrument has to be performed. The first step is baseline and the second step on clicking on to the add here we have to load the next step is loading step and that is nothing but your immobilization step. I have to say ok. The first step is baseline. I had to take an arrow mark here, right click here. And the next step is the immobilization. We have to use a loading. This is the time here. It's mentioned is 30 seconds. I'm mentioning around around thousand seconds for the immobilization of the antibody. I'm using a streptiodine sensor by default. It is coming as a streptiodine. This is we had assigned the assay definition step. The sensor assignment, where you had kept the sensor. In the sensor compartment, we had kept a sensor, CZ, A1 and the B1. It is, it is by default, it is showing. If it is somewhere, it is in the tray, we have to assign that. In the review experiment, whether my methods are fine or not, we can, we can test it. The first step is, the sensor has to be picked from the A1 and the B1. It is going to the, the baseline. That is nothing but your buffer. It is highlighting by the black black color on the on the, on the circle. So next step is your loading step. So it's moving. In the run experiments, where you want to save the data, I will select this and the experiment I can give as a load. Okay. Then I can uncheck this these two. Say go here. Yes, now the sensor is picking from the sensor tray here. The, if you look at, there's a shaker here. We are working at the thousand RPM speed. It's going to the baseline. It is acquiring for the 30 seconds the baseline. Now you can see the immobilization step. The biotinylated antibody is going to immobilize onto the streptiodin sensor. Generally, we will load. It, it has to reach to a, the equilibrium. Uh, roughly around, it should be a more than 0.7 nanometer is good enough for uh, uh, the immobilization level. We can go for the quantitations. Now, you can see that desired level of uh, uh, the biotinylated antibody mobilized onto the streptiodine sensors. Now, we can able to see there is a 1.4 nanometer loaded onto the sensor.
now I'm going to uh, take back this sample plate and also sensor tray. Now this sensor actually which is hydrated in the PBS buffer and also our biotinylated antibody also it is in the PBS buffer. Now I am going to equilibrate these sensors with the PBST buffer, the, the PBS buffer having the twin in that. Then this is the PBST buffer, we call it as a sample diluent buffer. Here I am going to take a 200 micro drop, this PBST buffer I will add here in the 2, A2 and the B2. I will now the sensor position is I am changing from A1 A1 B1 and like that to a, A2 B2. So now I will start the equilibration of the sensor with the, this this particular buffer. We are going to do a quantitation of the upper lipoprotein. So the in the in the previous step what we had done is we immobilized the biotinylated antibody onto the streptavidin sensor. Now we can do the quantitation using that sensors is pre-mobilized. So what I am going to do is I am making a apolipoprotein standard with a concentration is 50 microgram per ml. So I am here I am having apolipoprotein standard. I am going to dilute to a 50 microgram per ml using a sample diluent. So from this I am going to do a the standard I am going to do a serially dilution like two fold dilution I am going to do with the buffer. Here to that what I am doing is I am taking this 96 cell plate, I am adding the, the buffer into the wells. Here I will add I am going to use uh, around uh, six concentrations, uh, two fold dilutions. So I will add here buffers. I am going to do a dilution in the plate itself. So 200 microliter each of the sample diluent buffer I am placing in the 6 wells of the 96 cell plate. I am going to use here 3 as a references, this plain buffer uses as a reference. Here this is the 50 microgram per ml protein I am serially diluting, doing a 2 fold dilution in the plate. So now we had made a 6 concentrations of the standard APO lipoprotein. So starting from concentration range 1.56 to 50 microgram per ml. I had put these standards the 1.56 in from A3 to A till A8 that is the last 50 microgram per ml. As well as I had put a reference buffer, the, the buffer which we are using for the reference subtraction here. So that I had put it at the B6, B7 and the B8. Now I am going, going to add a unknown samples. We have a 3 unknown samples here. So that I am going to put it in the B3, B4 and the B5. So these 3 unknown proteins we are going to determine from the concentration of the unknown apolipoprotein in the, in the samples using the standard. Now I am going to add the 3 unknown samples here. I am going to place at the B3, this is the sample number 1, this is sample number at B4, the sample number 3 at, at B5, so there are 3 unknown samples. So I am using the glycine buffer that is a pH 2 10 millimolar glycine buffer. Uh, this is used for the regeneration of the uh, the sensor. So this the regeneration buffer I am going to place at the the A11 and the B11. So this will the the bound apolipoprotein will be washed when the uh, the sensor dip into this acidic buffer. So also we have to place one more which we, we call it as a neutral buffer that is what this PBST buffer I am going to place this one at the A12 and the B12 
Now I am placing this sensor tray into the instrument at the sensor compartment and also we had prepared the sample tray. Here we had put the unknowns as well as the standard sapolipoprotein A in the sample plate. Now our aim is like here, we are performing a quantitation experiment. So now we have to choose the quantitation mode here, new quantitation experiment. Here in this, we are using a basic quantitation with a regeneration because two sensors we have immobilized and that same sensor will be regenerates and, and, and reacquired the different concentration data. So we had to choose the blank experiment and say basic quantitation with the regeneration blank experiments then we have to say go here in the experiment when you open this experiment uh, you will see the plate definition in the plate definitions what what samples we had put it here so here from a3 we had put uh, around standards a3 to a8 six concentrations we had chosen this six concentration we choose it this as a standard Okay, now we can see that this has highlighted as a the green color. And also here, one more, we have chosen these three are unknown samples. And these three are your reference. We can choose the reference. Or later also we can we can uh, we can take it as the reference into a like even unknowns. Later in the data analysis also we can that, that can be modified as a reference. Here in the table on your right hand side we have to put the information here. In the A3 what you had put and A8 what you had put. In the method modify section here single analyte we have to choose 120 seconds we have to use a 400 400 uh, uh, the, uh, the regeneration is 5 seconds it will dip in the acidic buffer. 5 seconds it will dip in the neutral buffer. That that cycle has to be performed at least for the three three cycles. So then precondition means sensor first will regenerate and then goes to sample. Post condition is nothing but once the sensor is uh, uh, put it into the sample, after that it will go for the regeneration. So we have to choose both precondition and the post condition sensors. 120 seconds is the acquisition time. I can still um, extend to a 150 seconds here, then say OK. 400 is the shaker speed. I will say OK here. Then in the sensor assignment, it is showing so many sensors here. But we are using a two set of sensors for the acquiring the all the samples. So now we had kept a sensor at the position one. So I will say remove automatically. Your sensor is placed at the second. We had kept sensor for the equilibration using the 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 uh, the PBST buffer. In the review. We can we can see how exactly the the instrument will perform. Sensor is picking from the second position. It is going to a regeneration. Then if you click on this arrow, it is a neutralization, regeneration, neutralization, regeneration, neutralization. In the method, we had said that it has to in the plate definition. We had mentioned that it has to perform for a three cycles. So that's what it is indicated by in the experiment. It is acquiring for a three cycles. Then later it goes to a sample. Then once again regeneration, neutralization, regeneration, neutralization, regeneration, neutralization. Then goes to here second step and regeneration, neutralization, regeneration, neutralization, regeneration, neutralization. Then the third same same the process will continue till the last. In the run experiment, where you want to save the data, I will mention this file as a quant. Apolipoprotein. Okay. Sensors already highlighted. I will uncheck this. Then I can say go here.
how the instrument is picking the sensor from the sensor rack and it is going to a regeneration The pink one is the one which is unknown sample here and the, the green, the sensor it is indicating the lowest concentration which is around 1.5 microgram per ampere. Once the data is acquired, the green indicates this is the, the standard and as well as the pink indicates this uh, as an unknown sample. Now the acquisition is done, we will go for the data analysis. This is the file, this is the acquisition file indicated by a green color here. So now we can see this, uh, the graph, it is indicating the all, all your standard. This is your standard graph, the one which is the 50 microgram is the highest, the binding curve is showing, then the, then the second then the third then the fourth and the uh, the fifth concentration and the sixth so highest will be the 50 and the lowest will be the 1.56 microgram per ml here there are the three unknown samples also we had uh, kept in the in the v3 v4 and the v5 and the three reference samples these reference samples are nothing but your buffers buffers also sometimes gives artifacts to subtract the artifacts from the uh, from the signal we are we have to use a method called as a reference subtraction method here we are going to click this reference subtraction average because these three are wells are the buffers so it will get subtract from the all the all the all the acquisitions for the different concentrations as well as the unknown from that so now we have to go here in the result section in the result sections we have a different equations here in the in the standard curve equations which one you want to choose like linear point to point we have four pl methods five pl methods as well as linear y is equal to a mx plus c kind of equation a into x plus b so we will go with this equation linear equation here and also we had put standard in the plate itself as well as the uh, the unknowns so we can easily do a, a data analysis we can quantitate the unknown samples then we say calculate binding rate when you say calculate binding rate we will see the straight line the blue dots indicates the different concentrations of your standards and the the red ones which indicates your unknown sample there are the three unknown samples here so in the unknown sample we can see uh, standards if you look at the standard 50 microgram the the back calculated instrument back calculated it recovered as a 49.2 percent if you see the percent residuals, that's what we are we are saying. It should be the plus or minus 10 percent for the acceptance criteria. So this is we are getting around 49.2, 25 we are getting as a 27, 12.5 we are getting as a 12, 6.25 we are getting as a 5.73, 3.13 we are getting around 3.27, and 1.56 we are getting 1.3. But somewhat this value should be a more than 10 even we can exclude also from the binding rate calculations not required i think here in the unknown concentration if you look at all the three samples which are the the, the well concentration is calculated as a 30 38.7 37.9 nothing but 38 microgram and 51 it is somewhat 51 is something like a very high showing but but our standard curve is 50 but still the the instrument extrapolates and calculates the concentrations so now we can save this data we can save this as a save report if you save report it will convert this into excel sheet like you can give a upper standard curve then say ok it will create as a excel sheet the report will be created as an excel sheet in the summary you will you will you will see the what are all the data uh, uh, where it is and all that and the standard curve if you look at this is the standard curve we had the standard curve also chi square is uh, uh, 
0.997 r square and r square is a zero. This is a very good actually if you look at all data points almost on the uh, very near the line. And in the plate map where you had put your uh, the samples and the unknown samples in the result section, this is your standard along with your percent residuals and also for the unknown samples here it is assigned unknowns that that indicated to your calculated concentration. If it is any like uh, if you, if your sample is dilution dilution diluted, you have to put a dilution factor automatically calculates its the calculated concentration with respect to a dilution factor. If you look at the R square values of the all the unknown samples as well as the standards, it is a more than 0.9. So the data is acceptable. So with this, I am going to finish the quantitation experiment. Thank you. In today's lecture and demonstration session, you have observed another application of bilayer interferometry. I hope you made observation that a standard curve obtained for apolipoprotein E was linear and had good dynamic range with high response level. These standard curves can be extrapolated to find the concentration of apolipoprotein in the complex solution. Of course, you can choose any other protein of interest and the same experiment can be performed to measure the concentration of your protein of interest from the complex solution. Bilayer interferometry could be used to measure the concentration of a specific protein even in complex solutions without need to purify the proteins. In the next lecture, we will see more of these applications of using label free biosensors to study biomolecular interactions. Thank you.